Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer! Last episode, we went into the dreams of the other two people who were here. One of them was a Mind Flayer, and that was actually ridiculously simple and easy to do, just lead him over to an exit, and he was done. The other was a much longer and much more interesting thing, where we had to help a mage get out of a, uh, get out of a contract with a devil. Very long story, but we did it. Basically, the devil screwed up. Anyway, we have this portal here. Let's take a look at what's inside. Oh, well, I've never been here before. The air is thick with screams. They rise like a symphony under a dead gray sky, each note a shriek of rage, a plea for mercy, or a moan of despair. Is this a dream? It seems. Travis... Ignum? The sound of your name is hoarse and distant, yet it cuts through the din of voices, coming from a twisted but familiar form that lies embedded in the wall just ahead. Bishop? The man you knew as Bishop lies encased in a quivering greenish mold. His limbs are twisted at odd angles, as if they are broken. His face, frozen in a grimace of pain, barely clears the surface of the wall, like the face of a drowning man gasping for air. His eyes meet yours, and you realize that all the color has drained from his hair and his flesh. One of his eyes is completely white and bulging. I killed you, Bishop. I saw you die. So you did. I made a stupid mistake. Threw in with the losing side. Gloat if you like. I would. If the tables were turned. Who is this one? He speaks as if he knows you. Hmm. Have you assembled a new circus of capering beasts? Does the pretty hag spawn sing for his supper? Or does he dance as well? Gan is a trusted friend, more so than you ever were. And I dance and sing quite well, I would add. More trusted than the man who opened the gates of your keep to a horde of undead? You should treasure that compliment, Hagspawn. It is clearly heartfelt. At once, the wall shudders, convulses. The twisted figures trapped within cry out as one as the entire wall shifts. Limbs shudder, bones crack and the greenish mold expands, covering faces, eyes, and mouths. The smirk leaves Bishop's face, replaced for one naked moment by wide-eyed fear. Can you hear it? In the screams. Underneath the screams. The reason you're here. They are no. These other dudes, sons, they know why I'm here. They've been here longer. Decades. Centuries. The walls hinder. Take some more quickly than others. And some hold on. Pointlessly. Staving off oblivion. Grabbing for every moment. <laughs> They're infected with hope. Waiting for the crusade to return. The betrayer's crusade. What do you know about it? Bishop's one good eye loses focus. It seems to look through you, beyond you. The screams and cries of the other souls become quieter, as if they are suddenly listening to his words. It ended here. This wall. It hungers. It drains everything away. Your voice is different. Are you still Bishop or someone else? For a moment, Bishop's eye seems to clear. He looks at you, takes in your face, as if for the first time. You. I saw you. Here! I saw you in the wall! I think you're mistaken. I've never seen this wall before. Yes, you're right. It was someone else. You're a mask. Nothing but a mask. The wall shudders again, and you hear a sickening crack as Bishop is drawn further back into the wall. Green wave rushes in to cover his face, and bursts forth from his mouth in a noxious pour. I see you, the God of the Dead. They're coming. Again, 
the god of the dead. There is some game being played here, with ancient rules. They're coming. Oh dear. A horned devil and a pit fiend. Alright, get on killing him, please. It's a bit resistant to some of the damage I'm able to cause it. Alright, now for the pit fiend here. Also resistant to a fair bit of the damage, but I'm still able to cause some. And now I can't attack him because he's... Because I'm blind. Oh, there we go. Now I can see. There we go. But I think it may benefit us to examine the section of wall where your friend used to be. Let's do so. The noxious green mold has closed over Bishop's face and head. One of his hands still protrudes from the wall, contorted around an object that lies half buried in the mold. Try to pry the object free. You dig into the mold around Bishop's hand. The surface is soft, feathery, like moss, but underneath it becomes firm, with hidden barbed edges capable of tearing flesh or holding it fast. At last, the object comes free. It is a piece of a mask, pale and maggot gray. It drinks in the light, as if hungering, but reflects none. A third mask fragment to join the other two. Curious. Very. You acquired this object in a dream, and when you awoke it was still clutched in your hand. The object appears to be a piece of a shattered mask. In the dream, you pried this mask from the fingers of Bishop, your one-time companion, who had been absorbed into a wall of screaming souls. The fragment's colors shift and blur as you look at it, though it most often appears pale and maggot gray, drinking in the light, but reflecting none. I kind of want to keep them out. Three pieces of mask. I think that's all of them. They do seem to match together. Curious. Ah, and now we leave. Enter the portal. We have another one. Portal. I feel like I need to investigate it. Let me save first. All right, into the portal we go. Now this just goes back to here. I feel like I may have missed or screwed something up. No matter, we've been through. Very well, let us speak with the coven. Oh, and now it's gone. I think somehow I did things in the wrong order and it screwed things up and I may have missed a dream. Oh well. A change has come over the Chamber of Dreamers. The hideous forms of the Coven are solid now, and whispers fill the room. Hundreds of whispers, resolving themselves slowly into a single voice, which prickles like a swarm of ants inside your skull. Speak. You are the slumbering Coven. The ones who have slept beneath Rashomon. Yes. The slayers of my father, the warden of my mother, and the ones who punished her never to sleep, never to dream. Yes. Why? She did not attack you. She did not... She broke our law, Spawn. The one you travel with. He is the product of such broken laws as are you. Transgressions must be punished, or they are repeated. I agree. And that is why we are here to punish you. No. Not unless you want this place to unravel around you. To see all dreams, all the chambers of this city flooded and gone. To do so would kill you as well. And much farther do we think you have to travel. Go on, Gan. They should be held to account for what they've done. My father... What happened to him? Dead and gone, 
by our law. As her mother gave in to her appetites, so was she forced to devour her own mate, in the manner of all hags, piece by piece, leaving just enough alive to scream. By your law, you say? Then all I wish is that the same justice be brought upon you, and that you feel its self-same mercy. You have questions, Spirit Eater? Ask them. You are hags, but covens are usually composed of three, not nine. How have you built this dreamscape? By weaving together the strands of our dreams. The longer we sleep, the stronger our web. And we take dreams from other minds, adding them to our own. From the dreams of mortals, we salvage much. Visions and hopes and memories. We take these things and gather them here before mortal minds can forget them. So you walk unbidden through people's minds? Yes. Mortals are stupid, forgetful things. We walk in their dreams, and we take what they will only lose. Why did you show me those dreams? What did they mean? We showed you nothing. You showed us and we drank deep. Such was the price of your passage, and of the words we speak to you now. Then those dreams came from my mind. From its deepest places, yes. Where dreams mingle with hidden and forgotten things. Your servant said that your dreams were disturbed and that I was the cause. Is this true? Yes. You are a tempest of dreams. A whirling storm, devouring dreams and dreamers alike. They swirl around you like leaves, tearing. Blending one into another. It is maddening. We saw you reach out to devour the bear god, and sensed in your hunger the death of all dreams. When such as you walks the land, all that we try to preserve is lost. Two women came before you not long ago. You gave them advice. Something to do with me. Yes. The White Twin and the Red. The White Twin was Lyanna. The Red Twin was Nephris. Nephris, the mother of Sophia. The pretty one. Her dreams are scattered. Nauseating to look upon. She knows not what she is. But yes, the one she calls Mother beseeched our advice and offered her dreams for trade. Then Nephris and Lyanna were sisters. They were sisters of a sort, and they were more than two. They sought to end your affliction, your hunger, to spare you from this suffering. The whispers seemed to draw back from your mind, separating themselves into many different voices. For a few moments, they echo back and forth across the chamber, as if conspiring amongst themselves. Then, abruptly, they resolve again into one. We are creatures of dreams, not words. Telling is cumbersome. We will show you what you wish to know. All right. Show me, then. Out of thin air step two women, one garbed in white, the other in red. You realize at once that you are seeing a dream, a memory, something that occurred here in the past. See us, hags of the coven, and know us for what we are. We beseech your wisdom and bear gifts of dreams to trade. Dreams of a sort even you have never seen. We have heard tales of you in the dreams of the living and reflected in the dying minds of those who perished in our sanctum. Your dreams are a treasure, unique in our hoard, like worlds seen through different facets of the same ancient stone. Your question resounds across the infinity of your dreams, but in this place, you must ask it aloud. Speak. We... We would know how to end the affliction. 
The curse that the Rashemi call the Spirit Eater. We have searched so long, Sisters of the Coven. We... Tell us how to end the hunger. How can the Eater of Souls be granted peace? Even in the dream, the whispering of the hag seems to pause, growing quiet for a long moment, as if in reverence or uncertainty. Then... That affliction is a punishment, meted out by one who once reigned as God of the Dead. He alone knows its beginnings, and he alone might bring about its end. You speak of Merkel, but... but he is dead. We seek an answer, not a riddle. That god of the dead has passed beyond thought or dream. He has been slain and his throne usurped. His knowledge is lost. Not lost. Merkel is a corpse, but his thoughts and dreams remain. Maroon now inside the rotting hulk of his mind. He dreams endlessly of old enemies come to grief and ancient slights. As long as he is remembered and feared by mortals, even if they are pitiful and few, his dreaming will persist and his mind shall endure. Then we must speak to a dead god? It can be done. That is all we would know, Sisters of the Coven. Thank you. Then this curse is the result of one of your gods? How many gods of the dead do you people have? Your people? The gods of the dead watch you, Dan of Dreams. All their laws, all their punishments will fall on you as well. And if you do not believe in them, then one of their harshest laws shall be inflicted upon you. To lie within the wall of the faithless until you dissolve as a fading dream. So keep your defiance if you must. But it will not last when death comes for you, dream thing. Did Lyanna and Nefer succeed? Did they speak to the dead god? That is a question we cannot answer. The Red Twin has returned to Thay to her academy. A horror of endless voids and fractured souls. We are blind to all that passes there. The White Twin, Lyanna kept portals in her secret room, in the shadow of her theater. One of them is open only to those who know where it leads. Beg passage from her keeper of doors, and he will open the way. Beyond that portal lies the Academy, and your answers. But we care not what you do, Spirit Eater. We have spoken enough. You have troubled our dream too long. My apologies, Sisters of the Coven. Just a few more questions and I will leave you in peace. Speak then, Spirit Eater, but do not expect us to receive you ever again. My companions, who fought the King of Shadows at my side, what has become of them? You see them in your mind's eye, but their dreams, if they live, are far beyond our grasp. The wilds of the witch realm, the merchant kingdoms to the west, and they to the south. In these places, our dreams wander free, and our eyes rove even farther. But not that far. Not yet. Still, we sense one of them. He is close, but he is shattered, ruined, severed. His dreams come only in flashes, and they are strangely from our sight. Hmm. Do you mean Bishop? No, another. The one you call Bishop is dead, dissolving in the wall. Or do you not believe your dreams? Where is the Sword of Gith and the shard that was torn from my chest? Sword and shard are tied to you, and to the others who have also borne the blade. The Sword of Gith is not separated so easily from its wielder's hand. The Shard of Gith? What are they speaking about? Quiet for a moment. Let them speak. I'll explain later. Shard and sword have been rejoined. 
Reunited with all their pieces. The blade was taken from you for this purpose, and it awaits you, reforged, in a hidden sanctum now besieged. Curious. I've been told that there were other spirit eaters before me. What do you know of them? Other masks, yes. Many masks. We walked in their dreams, just as we have walked in yours. Their faces were as varied as the mortals who infest the witch realm. Some prettier than yours. Oh, yes. And some fouler. All ended the same. How did they end? Hunger, starving, ravenous. Thoughts, minds, dreams, all drained away and forever lost. You are utterly unlike a spirit eater. We hoard, collect, preserve. To us, dreams are things to be treasured, torn from those who do not know their worth. But you devour and destroy, leaving nothing in your way. I have no other questions. You've told me all I needed to know. I say we bring their dreaming to an end. Show them the pain of the waking world. Agree. So, here we have a choice. We either kill them... ...or let them live. I came here in peace, and I shall leave the same way. No. They have dwelled here, causing suffering. I say we destroy them, lay this city low. Is that what you want? Revenge? I care not what you believe. But these things make their presence felt in dreams throughout Rashomon and beyond, leaving the stain of their evil in every mind they touch. All things touch the dream, and the dream of these creatures is foul indeed. Very well. Let us ruin the sleeping kingdom they have established. If you end our dream, all that it contains is lost. Imagine the dreams of a thousand, thousand souls, the knowledge of wizards and keys, centuries dead, the hopes and loves of men and women and beasts, all contained within our unending dream. Such a troll as has never been assembled, here or anywhere across the plains. This you would destroy for your own selfish whim? Oh boy. If I must sacrifice all that to ensure that you can inflict no more pain ever again, then I will. So be it. My spirits are ready to fight with us. To their second deaths, if need be. You have not the power, nor the will, stupid, arrogant thing! How many hundreds have tried to usurp our place, but we took their power and absorbed their dreams. This one does not stand alone, but with me. I am no novice to the unraveling of the dreams and ambitions of others. Together, you will not find us easy prey. Together with Gan, concentrate your will upon the dream and attempt to take control. Gan begins to mumble a series of words. You do not understand what they mean, if indeed they mean anything at all. But you close your eyes and concentrate on them, focusing your mind and allowing Gan to guide you. Together you reach out, probing, drifting with the ebb and flow of the dream. The dreamscape is like a vast tapestry upon which the hags crawl, greedily snatching up dream fragments from weaker mortals and sewing them into their vast, sprawling web. Gan guides you to the scenes, the weakest, most ancient connections that bind the dream together. And together, you tear them asunder, watching as the tapestry splits apart. And the hags shriek in agony as their dream dissolved into a million whirling threads. Well then. And now we must kill them all.
and they've all died. Thus, they have passed. Yes. You leveled up, so we'll do it. What spells are we going to give you? You have all those. Not sure what spells they give you, but F, Greater Fire Burst, I suppose, would be one to have. And I guess a Lightning Bolt spell would be bad. Okay. And that yes. is going to be the end of this episode, because it has basically gone on long enough. Thus, I shall end this episode here. What do you think? Did I do the right thing, choosing to end them? Yes. Or should I have left them be? You tell me. As is, I am going to end this episode here. Next episode, we'll return back to the town, turn things in, and speak with our companion to see what will happen. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Travis Ignam, Ganiev, Sophia, and uh, Kaylin. This has been a Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer, and I shall see you all next time.